Our coronavirus coverage, we've been watching the numbers, of course, as cases have grown and grown very quickly. Now, globally, more than 83,000 people having coronavirus confirmed, about 2,800 deaths. The virus, if you look on this map, you can see it spread into nearly 60 countries now. Nigeria, Lithuania, Belarus, the Netherlands, New Zealand announcing their first cases today. Big concern about Nigeria, the first sub-Saharan African nation to report a case. So around the world, scientists are working toward a vaccine, but we know that could be many months away. Some say likely over a year before one is development and also looking to treatment, cure, prevention. And this morning, we're going to learn about work being done by a team, a Canadian team led by a Canadian researcher that is giving many people cause for hope. Last week, they were invited to begin clinical trials in Wuhan, China, which is, of course, the very epicenter of the outbreak in China. The team is led by Dr. Michel Chrétien, who is Emeritus Research Professor at the Clinical Research Institute of Montreal. And he is my guest this morning. Dr. Chrétien, it is a pleasure to welcome you to our program. Hello. Hello et bonjour. Et bonjour à vous, monsieur. I am so interested in this. And of course, as everyone becomes a little bit more interested, a little bit more concerned about coronavirus, the work that you and your team are doing in your lab is very interesting to us. Can I just ask before we talk specifics, what's your feeling as you talk to your colleagues and your lab members there in the science world? What's the feeling of the how much urgency there is to come up with something to deal with coronavirus? Well, as you know, and it's been uh, said many times, it's a new virus. So we are in a black box. We don't know what's inside. So the strategy at this time is to look what is available to test it in patients as soon as possible. And this is the reaction that the Chinese authorities have had. And this is why they contacted us to see what we had in hand, which was more experimental, uh, but uh, quite a good proof that uh, what we had working on has a antiviral activity with, for more than one viruses. Okay, so just, so just pause a, there. That, Can you pause there if you will, obviously. So people are looking for answers and they've come looking to see what you're doing. Because you're working with something, I want to make sure I yeah. pronounce this correctly, quercetin. What is quercetin? Uh, quercetin is a, is a, come from, it's a, it's a flavonoid coming com from plants. It's a, in many plants, and it's in also in, in, in vegetables, uh, in onions and apples, but in low quantity. So uh, it has maybe some good action, but the amount we take every day, although we want to increase it, is probably too minimal. What we did in, in, 200, in 2014 at the time of the Ebola crisis in Western Africa, we were, test, we were using quercetin for our own basic work. We were not working on viruses. But then uh, we said maybe that if we can test our drug on viruses with high doses, uh, maybe it may have some antiviral activity. It had been in the air for a few times, but not never proven. So based on our, uh, based on our data, we uh, made the experiments to see if high doses is, can be you know, tolerated by the animals, and it did at high doses. So we did an experiment with the National Microbiology Laboratory in Winnipeg, because this is the only lab in Canada that can handle the Ebola virus because it's so dangerous. So uh, with their co collaboration, we set up a, a protocol and we tested quercetin against Ebola in vivo in animals. And bingo, it worked. So we were very happy. But uh, we wanted also to, to prove that it was more than one virus. So we did the year after on Zika. And again, it proved to be uh, antiviral against Zika. So we had then in hand a wide spectrum antivirals. We continued our work on the, 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 the biology of quercetin because our quercetin for us is a tool for uh, testing some hypothesis in other field of, of, of medicine. Yes. And uh, when, uh, when the Ebola crisis came in, uh, back in, in Congo in, in, in 2018, uh, they asked us also, they asked us, you know, to, uh, to pinch in, but we haven't yet uh, solved all the, 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 the problems to get into the trial there because okay. of the local... So can and I just, just pause again? So just let me just, just jump in for just one moment. So this is so interesting. So this plant compound that, just so people understand, is already in use to help lower cholesterol, already used to help 
treat inflammatory diseases in low doses. Right. You, boasted the, you boosted the doses and applied it to Ebola, applied it to Zika, and in animal testing, you had really good results. So then how then yeah. do you, so then you thought, look at coronavirus, we're going we're to test it and see if there has any efficacy here? Yeah, well, what happened in the meantime, other people also are interested in quercetin, and some have worked on SARS, which is the little brother of, of the, the, this, the present coronavirus, and it works on SARS. So we have, we, at least we have some basic data indicating that they might have good chances to work. So, so how would it work, the, Dr. Critchia, how would it work if you can explain in simple terms, how does quercetin work on these viruses? Okay. First of all, it's a pill that you take uh, four times a day at high doses. We know uh, that it will have no side effects. These studies on, the, on, on human toxicity have been done by a Swiss company 10 years ago. So we know there will be no side effects, so we have nothing to lose uh, to, to use it now in, uh, in, the, in this patient. It works by preventing the entry of the virus into the cell. As you know, a virus is a has to enter cells to be uh, obnoxious. So it prevents, it diminishes the entry of the virus in the cell. And also it prepares the body to, to, to be more, to, to react better against the infection. So it has two, it, it, it has two action to make the body more reactive to the infection and to do it, to diminish the load of the virus. Okay. Now this is a, what we've done in animals and we think that it will be the same in, in human. And uh, it's given by, by, by mouth, so it's, it's easy to, to administer. It's available because we were, are in contact with a Swiss company who, for other reasons, had developed uh, uh, pills with high doses of quercetin. And they, when they learned about our work a, a year and a half ago, they said, ask us the number of pills you want and we'll provide them to you because we produce in, in a high level, in a high quality and tolerable uh, in human and accepted uh, and certified by the FDA American. That's important. So Already are, FDA approved. So you've got the lab, you've got the manufacturer ready to go. You've got FDA approval. You've got a pill form, and I know it's low cost. So. You've already done the animal testing and had successful results for Ebola, for Zika, and for SARS. Now you're taking it, as I understand this, into human trials in China. Can you explain what, at what stage you are in the development of applying this to coronavirus? Well, as, as of 2 o'clock this morning, I received an email from my colleagues in China. We have uh, proposed to them a protocol for, with our experts. They are now at the last stage to have our protocol uh, accepted by the IUS uh, authorities in China. So we hope that by next week they will have the OK to go ahead. I've told already last night my uh, my colleagues in, in Zurich to send the pills in, uh, in China and then they will be ready to go. In the meantime, in Montreal, I form a team uh, this week that will uh, monitor the whole study uh, from in-house and with experts that will follow with our Chinese colleagues, uh, you know, the daily operations over there. We cannot go because it's too dangerous, A. But B, what will make certain, we'll have a communication center that will make us 24-7 uh, 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 in, in contact with okay. the uh, our the colleagues, but in contact also with the hospital where the drug will be administered. So we will be, see the charts of the, uh, and the results on patients, the x-rays. So we're getting ready uh, really uh, to, uh, to, uh, to monitor uh, from our side uh, the, uh, what's the, happening the there? Which, uh, what's happening there? So this is exciting. this is it's very it's very exciting to hear and very imminent in terms of putting this into practice in a human clinical trial. I mean, as this spreads and people become more and more concerned, and we see what how the world's economies are reacting to this. Obviously, there's a big push to come up with some solutions. I mean, how how would you characterize this? Everyone's going to be looking for a silver bullet, as as we say. But how how optimistic are you? What do you think the potential of this is here, Dr. Krejci? Well, the, uh, if I look at the figure of this morning, which uh, in, in indicate that there are more cases outside of China than in China, makes it makes it very very dangerous. I think the spreading is something that you remember SARS in two or three when it landed in Toronto, one person contaminating the the the, the old Toronto idea. Area. I mean, it's the same that's coming. I, I've heard that one case in uh, in Iran uh, contaminated 20 people. Mm -hmm. So uh, being outside of China now makes it more difficult. 
And naturally, in China, on, on the other hand, that's what will be the study. Because first thing first, we have to do a very scientific study uh, where there's a lot of patients so that we have sufficient numbers to make statistics. We cannot do distribute quercetin, for example, to all people now because uh, we will not be able to monitor. Right. So the first, the first thing to do is to do a, a, a very uh, uh, scientific study hoping that within the next few weeks or next few months we will have a uh, result saying yes it's good or yes it's not good because you have to keep in mind we don't want to to make a false hope because it can be negative we don't know we're in a black box you know and uh, we're trying to just to open it look inside and uh, with the best eye we have and the best tool we have developed so, but we'll know in, in about, uh, in a few weeks, if it's good, if it's good, it's great. If it's not, we'll work, we'll work harder. Dr. Michel Chrétien, thank you very much. And again, encouraging given what we've seen against Zika, against Ebola, against SARS, we do not know against coronavirus, but as you say, uh, it'll be very, very interesting to see how this unfolds in the next weeks and months to come as you get yeah, your work I'm, underway yeah. in China. Thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah, meeting that's, you. That's Last thing I would like to say that, yes. you know, for, I'm very happy that uh, Canada is in, in the loop. And this is because of a uh, result of the ma major investment the government's making research all over. Uh, research funding is a long term return, and now we have to prove it. Well, we're right in the mix with these other clinical trials as the world searches for something to deal with something that is a pretty uh, concerning to so many now. Thank you, Dr. Michel Chrétien, joining us from Montreal. He is the Emeritus Research Professor, his team at the Clinical Research Institute of Montreal, about to start clinical trials on humans in China with this new plant substance. Get used to the name, Quercetin. They're about to test it. This is CBC News Network.